Hi guys, it's Kian. So today we have a chit chat video with my newest doll. Um, he's still currently unnamed, but he's from my dear boy, and the scout name is Hobin. So you may notice that he's wearing a really high turtleneck, and that's because it's actually he's actually boreal wing. Uh, normal skin body. So yeah, so the body doesn't match him, but the turtleneck hides it, so you can't tell. So this is Elfie's body actually. This is a Switch Humming Dolly 65 attractive body, something like that. I can't really remember, but anyway, so this morning I was trying out some eyes on this boy, which I'm just going to call Fubin for now because I haven't named him. So there's a few things I want to talk about today. And yeah, let me just go right into it. Right? So I think the first thing is really like how I bought him. So I mentioned it briefly in the box opening video that it was quite a troublesome process to get him. So I'm just going to share my experience and like, I don't know if you are ever like me, you know, an international um, buyer and someone who wants to buy Korean artist dolls, maybe this might help you. Um, I don't really know. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, so what happened was, um, like I mentioned in the box opening video, which was last week's video, um, I put out a one to buy on Twitter, um, looking for this hit because it's a hit that's only sold in Korea. So, um, it was really hard to get and I think so far on like Den of Angels I've only seen one My Dear Boy head being sold and um, that's My Dear Boy Hyung and the seller of that doll also mentioned that it's a very rare head to get so um, I'm not sure how they bought it but yeah anyway so, so that's kind of like the expectations I had going in into trying to like set up a want to buy tweet to try and buy him. So when I was putting up the one to buy tweet, I put it into this hashtag which um, I'll write somewhere. Um, honestly, I don't know what it means. I just know it's a tag that you can use to search for like things that people are selling. And it's used for like a lot of ball jointed doll hobby things like dolls, eyes, clothes, etc, wigs and so on. So usually you have to type some keywords to filter things out. but Anyway, I I just like, you know, looked at a bunch of other tweets and how people drafted them and then copied the stuff and, you know, just verified that they mostly said the right things using Google Translate. So, <laughs> um, yeah, so honestly, that's what I did. And I wasn't really expecting to be able to buy him because like at the time when I wrote that tweet, there was another one written in English was also searching for somebody who was also searching for a whole bin head and I think a Leo head. Um, it was written in the same tweet. So that tweet was like months before like me at the time trying to put things in. So I was like, hey, if this person's tweet's still there with no like update, no like, uh, oh, I got a hit or like, you know, the deletion of the tweet or whatever. So I was like, oh, this person probably never bought that hit. I can't fully remember. I think the person did write in Korean, but I can't recall now. Um, anyway, so that was the kind of expectations I had going in. I was like, oh, I'll just put this one to buy tweet out into the void and see, you know, whether there's any chance at all of like ever getting it. And my expectations was close to zero because I assumed that one, like um, it's really hard to buy outside of Korea and two, somebody else had already done the same method I was using, which is to put out a one to buy tweet and it didn't seem like they had any success. So that was my expectations going in. So I wrote a tweet, left it there, forgot about it, forgot to check my Twitter actually. So the first person who contacted me, I I only saw their DM like one whole week later and that's why they've already sold the hit by the time I saw it. And this uh, hit is bought from the second person who contacted me, which uh, as I said initially was like, 
oh, um, how much are you looking to pay for this head? And I gave her a price, which was like 200 to 240 uh, USD. And then at first they were like, oh, um, I think something along the lines of, um, oh, I don't think I'll be selling the head now, uh, which was fine. I mean, sometimes people sell heads for different reasons, right? So I was like, yeah, it's fine. So um, I think a few more weeks after that, that's when she contacted me and said like, oh, hey, um, if I bundle this head with some ice, it would be 300,000 won. Uh, will you be willing to buy it? And by that time, I was like, I'm just going to take any chances of buying this head. So yeah, so that's how I bought it. So about the process of actually buying him, so besides the fact that everything was conducted in Korean, right, the main problem I had was like trying to pay. So I think the seller didn't have PayPal and she wanted me to do bank remittance, which is fine. Um, but the issue with bank remittance is you need a bunch of information like your SWIFT code, like your bank name, bank account number, your SWIFT code, the the bank account holder's name and the bank account holder's address, I think. And all of this have to be in English because that's like that's the language that like Singapore uses, which is where I'm from. And obviously like all of this information that the seller had was in Korean because that's where she's from. And then she had to um yeah, and then there was some other issue because she was using a bank that doesn't allow me, uh, me to remit over. She also she had to find somebody else's account, uh, like a friend's account or something, so that I can remit to her friend so that she can get the money and so on. Um, and then, yeah, so like there was a lot of back and forth of like, oh, which account to use, and then like uh, having to translate all the information in, into English, and then, um, and then she wanted me to send it in two payments as well. So like once just for the hit in the eyes, and then another time for the shipping. And if you know international remittance, there's always a fee. So it happens that the bank that I'm using, which if there's anyone sing anyone who's Singaporean, um, I use the DBS remit, which to Korea is zero fee on our side. But there is a fee, potentially, I guess, on the other person's side. So um, I wasn't charged a fee when I sent it on my end. But then I think when she received it, there was like 10,000 won short. So there was probably a processing fee in between uh, from like the receiving banks and which like, you know, all of these things are not obvious at all. And like that's why bank remittance are a pain. Um, but whatever the case is, I paid for him and I paid more because of that like fee lost during remittance. Lost because I didn't know that it was going to be charged. Then um, yeah, so like I paid like a bit more than what. I wanted to for him, but I figured like, you know, what's the chances that I'll get this chance to buy him again? So yeah, I figured it was worth it and paid for it. But you know, I, I say it now, but honestly, when I was doing this, it was really stressful because like I was afraid that I wasn't understanding mm, the messages in Korean correctly. And then there was also a lot of like, oh no, um, what if we translate something wrong during the bank remittance and the money doesn't go through? So that was um, not that fun. And yeah, so that was that. Lot. And I didn't really want to talk about it during the box opening because I was just like really happy to have him. But that is kind of the reality of like trying to buy a hit off Twitter if there's like no PayPal, nothing. And also like um, if for some reason the seller doesn't keep their word in send out the hit, you basically have no way of getting your money back, not like PayPal where there's a guarantee. So yeah, that's definitely something to think about. Um, yeah, so that was how I got this hit. And for him, right, so I was trying out wigs and eyes on him this morning and his head is really, really small. It's like 7.8 inches and this is a SD 17 size body right because it's like 65 cm body and like most of my other wigs which are meant for like 8.5 inches head or like on the low end of like um, on the small side of like one third dolls 
they just look very funny on him because like there's a lot of poof at the top part here and at the back and like this is one of the few wigs that like do fit him somewhat nicely but even then it's a bit like it's a bit poofy at the back um because like if you recall from the books opening video his head is kind of like there's no there isn't this like curve down it's just kind of like boom. so as a result the wigs don't sit very low on his head and they kind of just like look very puffy at the top here like it's not obvious if this wig because of all this like styling but yeah so like for example the the simple like bow cut wigs that Elfie has those don't look great on him yeah and another thing is he's currently wearing grey eyes which were Parker's so like these are this were Parker's default eyes um but because like this eyes look best on him at this point in time when he doesn't have a face up so I gave Parker the other pair of eyes that was hanging around So yeah, here's Parker. So I don't know if you can see, but yeah, so now Parker is wearing um also like kind of grey eyes, grey green. They're from Enchanted Doll. One of the Marble B series, which is like the realistic line. And honestly I think Parker looks better with this pair of eyes. So that was a bit of a random fluke thing that happened. Yeah, so... This boy, on the other hand, is just wearing some sew in the doll, sew in the box doll eyes. I think that's what they're called. And they are okay, like, yeah, like, I think because of the way his eyelid is, it doesn't really show, kind of just looks like grey, um, and if you see, this is like as close as my camera will go, but Recently, I've been trying to get rid of like the residue inside his face up here before I start doing a face up on him. Um, but on the other hand, I'm also like, uh, I don't have a body for him yet, right? So if let's say the body is not that close of a match to the resin he's on, I mean the resin that he has, then I wanted the option to be able to try and blush it, to hide it. So I'm like, I'm like, not really sure whether I want to start his face up before I get him a body or not. Um, honestly, I haven't decided fully, but in the meantime, I'm going to try my best to remove more of this. And before this, whenever I remove face ups, I always use like acetone. Um, like that's the strongest thing I have. I either use isopropyl alcohol or acetone, like pure acetone. And I don't know if it's because the acetone I have is like quite old, like a few years old. It doesn't work that well for this and also because this, this blackish part right is actually in a very weird angle. Like it's like, it's like, let's say this is like his mouth from the side right. If I try and stick anything in to clean it, it doesn't clean it because it's like in this part. So it's really difficult to clean and even like using an old brush to, with like Mr. Color Thinner to try and clean it like I bought Mr. Color Thinner specially for him to try and clean it and this is still the best that it can do so there's also like a very, very tiny dot in the corner of his eye but I think that I can still live with because I, I know how to hide that I'm not entirely sure I will be able to um, 
do a face up that looks clean over like the lip residue so I'm still trying my best to remove more of it and I'm trying to remind myself to be patient with it because like it's not like it's a body right so it's not like there's any real rush to it's not like there's any real rush to like have to get him clean and faced up so that's what I'm reminding myself so yeah and like with a new head I come and I come across another problem which is like I don't know what to name him so I've been having this problem with like quite a few of my new dolls like I don't know what to name them and I don't recall this being a problem uh, earlier in the hobby like I used to be able to just come up with names for my dolls but like nowadays it's like I'm not sure what to name them so like a really long time ago when I first joined the hobby in 2009 it was really really common for people in Singapore with dolls to name them like like Japanese names or English names like I think because there was a lot of like overlap with doll collection doll collecting with like the cosplay hobby and like anime in general a lot of people had their dolls with like Japanese names like it was like super common um, and then English names were really common as well and like I think only a few people actually gave their dolls like other types of names so so if you look at my dolls i think the earlier dolls were all like english names like gabby's actually gabriel and then my second doll is dennis um and things like that but um in the more like recent years it's kind of like that's not a cool thing to do anymore you're not supposed to name your dolls that way it's kind of like cultural appropriation you know um i'm not really sure whether it's cultural appropriation but i definitely don't want to name my dolls japanese names because they're not japanese um honestly i have no idea what ethnicity they are but um that's why for my like more recent dolls like tones pepper salt they are all like just like objects or like nouns like they're just like regular nouns so they they are not like names per se right so like i feel like that gets around it and this kind of reminds me of like non-binary people choosing a name like trying to choose a name that doesn't have like a gender connotation or like a cultural connotation in that sense and like i'm like what do i call you so until then, this boy is not um, named yet, and I don't know if you have any suggestions on like how I could name him. Like I don't, I don't necessarily want like actual names, but like I don't know if you have any ideas. Just let me know in the comments below, and I'll think about it. I used to also go on like baby name websites to find names on my dolls, but um, yeah. I don't know whether I still want to do that. So the last thing I want to talk about today while he's here is about my depth view and some updates I guess. So I was kind of like oh I'm not really supposed to be buying any new dolls and then I bought him and then I went back to check my depth view resolution. Um, I don't know if you can see it. So it says here depth here take a whole year to try uh, not to start anything new blah 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 um, and then I don't know if you can see it here there's like BJDs right and then there's like no new dolls and apparently somewhere in between I have already cancelled it out and say savor or enjoy the dolls I have so I think I forgot about this but somewhere along the way I've actually already realized that the answer for like dolls and for eyes and wigs and clothes and so on isn't to um, completely not buy anything like I don't think that's what's in it for me in the depth here 
um, or how I want to move forward with my hobby also, I think, I think the thing that makes more sense is really like, or like the thing that makes more sense to me is really like trying to enjoy the stuff I have more, but it doesn't preclude me from buying new stuff if I like them, so yeah, I was kind of actually relieved when I saw that, but I mean, I, I, I still think the same, regardless of whether I updated my resolutions, but for the depth here, but um, it's good to know that I actually kind of realised that, but I forgot about it, and now I'm realising it again, and there's a chance that I may forget, for, there's a chance that I may forget about it again later, but in the meantime, um, I do want to just, you know, make a note that yeah, I think so far about that year, although my initial resolutions were really like not to buy anything new, um, I think along the way I found that what works better for me is not so much that I don't want any new things, but that I tend to get quite overwhelmed with the stuff I already have if I haven't had the time to play with them or process them, you know. Like I process them usually here, I mean play with them. Like so for example for this hit, I spent most of this morning just like trying floats eyes and wigs out on him and yeah that's like me processing I guess of like playing with him to really enjoy this doll even though he doesn't have a face up yet and like trying to remove all his face up residue and being patient with that is also me trying to enjoy this new hit so I think that's closer to what I found in the depth here it's that one, I am quite easily overwhelmed by new stuff, but two, the main issue isn't so much that it's a new thing, but that I haven't had time to um, play with it or experience it. And like before I have a chance to do that, it's probably not a good idea to like keep adding more new stuff because then this pile will just increase. So that's the depth here so far. So um yeah, so at one point I did think like, hey, if I get him, um, does that mean that somebody in the crew have to go? Because if you recall the doll collection video, I did say that when I was dressing all of them that I felt like, oh man, it's so tough dressing all of them. I don't really want to get any more new dolls. Because um, I don't know whether, <clears throat> I don't know whether I can actually, you know, take care of so many of them. So I was like, hey, if I got a new hit, does that mean somebody has to go? But then I realised that that in itself is kind of rigid thinking and it's not so much like, oh, I have one so somebody else must go, um, but really like how do I manage to play with all of them. So yeah, so actually I think the fun, so okay, the funny thing is like if anyone has to go from like the SD crew, um, it would be Parker. <laughs> Because, like, I like him and all, but he's, like, I have a few moody dolls already, so it's kind of like, yeah, I don't need so many of them. But interestingly enough, right, having him around, and because Paco is in the midst of being, like, restrained, I haven't actually restrung him since I cleaned him, um, but he's just lying around in parts. So, because he was lying around in parts, and because I, I, I have his eyes out, right, I was trying Paco's old eyes on him, which is why they're inside this head now. And that's why Parker got to try the new eyes, which were actually the eyes that uh, Pepper had. And then the reason why Pepper changed his eyes was because I was experimenting with Pepper, blah blah blah. So I guess in a way it's kind of not as straightforward as I would initially think. Like one step leads to the next, which then leads to the next, and so on. And I would not have guessed from the start that it would lead all the way there. And I think that's also kind of the point of a depth year. I don't start knowing my goals, but I kind of start in the general direction and intentionality of what I want. And along the way, I try different things and try and see how to achieve that and like really to enjoy the stuff I have more. Like, how do I do that? And yeah, I'm not sure whether this really fully makes sense to you if you've not experienced it yourself. Like, I don't know whether... I'm conveying it in the best possible way, but that's how I feel about it. And like this week was also an experiment, like this is a week that I originally bought for 
Pepper to try it? Pepper did try it, he didn't look that great with it, as in he didn't look bad with it, but didn't feel like him. And then Salt had it uh, for a while, and then this morning when I was dressing this boy, I was like, hey, he should try it. And actually, funnily enough, I wanted him to have like black hair and like golden eyes, um, kind of like how a lot of webtoon characters do. It's a popular color combination, I'm not sure why, but I can kind of see it's appeal now. Um, but yeah, he ended up with like grey on grey, so, you know, things just work out how they do. And yeah, I think the depth here has been interesting so far. Like, I caught myself a few times um, to not buy things that I actually didn't want that much. And then I did buy some stuff, but like, after thinking through it for really, really long and like, really, I guess, trusting my gut and asking myself if I really wanted it. And if I felt like queasy about it, I wasn't gonna do it. So, that has been like my experience of the depth year so far. I also kept like a running list of dolls that I've wanted on a whim. And he's actually not really on it. He's on another list called like my wish list. Because I was like, I'm never gonna get him, I'm just gonna put him on a wish list that you know, like, oh, one day maybe if I wish he will come. Um, so he was on a wish list, but then there were some other dolls that like. I knew I could possibly buy, but I didn't want to because I was in the midst of a debt fear and I was like, I don't really want any new dolls. So I put their names onto a list and I think that list had a bunch of like dolls. Actually, I'm just going to read it out. So I have a note called dolls I wanted to buy on a passing whim and I forgot most of this, but let me just read them out to you. So it's kind of telling that I forgot about most of them, which means I really only wanted to buy them on a whim. Um, so the first one is Mimo Marina, Betty and Oscar P, which I wanted around March 2021. I still think they're cute, but I don't really want to own them. Um, the second one is uh, CP Breakaway around late April 2021, because I was making the CP Delve tier list and I kept thinking about how I really, really wanted a breakaway back in the day. Um, but honestly, I have no use for a doll like that now because I really have Gabby and I don't know how a breakaway would fit in my crew. So that was the second one. The third one is uh, Ipo House, Ipo House Leonard uh, on a HID body. And I wanted that around May 2021 because I was reading a lot of webtoons and there were a lot of like really like buff men. So I was like, hey, I really like the HID body. What's the head scalp that I like the most? Um, and if you recall, uh, Genki and Ki has a HID Leonard, so like, yeah, I mean, when I saw him, I was a bit like, oh yeah, actually, I don't really need um, another doll that way. Then I went to this phase where I was looking at dolls with open mouth, like the Switch Gyoha Divine, or like the K-Doll k Seal, or even Switch Dojin. And then I wanted really smiley dolls, so I was looking at Hunoi. Honestly, I don't know how to pronounce this. It's another Korean artist. Um, her IG name is Kwon Siku. Uh, okay, anyway, so her Hunoi uh, Pear Booth, I think that's what it would be pronounced in Korean. But um, Phoebus? I don't know. And then there's like, there's a period when Little Monica was doing Cocoa Cream, which is like a tan, like a brown tan skin tone. And then I wanted Little Monica Duke. And then, like, because this boy was on my wish list, so I put him onto this doll I want to buy on a passing whim list, which is my dear boy Hobin. So he is technically on the list, but I added him, like, as an afterthought. And then at one point when Switch released Ido, I wanted Ido Inferno as a girl, but then I had a dilemma on, like, what kind of girl body would match. And then I was like, no, I'm not going to get him. And, yeah, looking at this list now, it's kind of like, I'm glad I had just left their names on the list instead of having an actual crew full of like auto stalls. Like I have one, but um, this is after some thought and like 
the doors on that list was like, I really just wanted them because of like, frivolous reasons, really. But it's kind of hard to like, be patient and remind myself that, you know, that passing whim or that short period of one thing that item would pass. So I think that list, keeping it around is really just to remind myself that in the current moment when I want something, it may feel like, you know, I have to have it, but I've already let so many of these things that I wanted pass by and nothing's happened. I feel fine. I feel actually kind of relieved that I didn't get them because getting them is just one step, right? And then after that, there's a lot more things that you have to do and the more things you have, the more things you have to maintain or do to upkeep them. So really like, yeah, I think that keeping that list really helped me put into perspective my purchases in the doll hobby and that also means that whatever I do purchase, which includes this wig, this boy, um, I think some very small amount of clothes that I enjoy. And there are some clothes that I bought that I'm like not 100% fond of, but most of the time, it's because like, it's a new style that I wanted to try. Right, so I did buy some stuff for Danny that like, I'm like a bit like, mm, it's not that great in terms of quality, but it's okay because it's a style that I was going to try. So there is a reason why I wanted to do it and it's not just because I wanted it in a very short time. So this chit chat video has been long enough. I hope you enjoy this boy's face and also I'm going to try and show you like a better 360 view of 360? 180 view of his face because I realised in my box opening video that I don't know why I was turning him like to the back so you saw the back of his head instead of the front um so i'm gonna try i'm gonna try and like give you a closer view of his face So he's wearing 14mm small iris eyes from So in a Box store, which are I think 6mm for the iris. I'm actually really excited to like want to start a face up on him. But I want to remove all this residue first and also glue his magnet back on. Uh, yeah, one of his magnets fell out. And also I have other face-up commissions at hand, so I'm like not that itching to exactly start on another face-up while I have two in process. So that helps a bit, I guess. Anyway, this has been a long enough chit-chat video. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, yeah, just let me know if you have comments on anything I shared today, and that's all for today. Bye.